How are you viewing the market at the moment where foreign investors are keeping things pretty well buoyed at this stage along with local institutional investors but where we have a retail segment that is still pretty risk averse and so in turn turning their attention towards the bond market? Uh, yes, true to that. Most of the activity on the market currently, 50 to 60 percent, is actually being driven by, by foreign activity. If you look at the, the three top gainers yesterday, which were East Africa Bureaus, uh, KCB, Cooperative Bank, Equity Bank, all of them, most of 80 to 90 percent of the volumes there were actually from, from foreigners. Local institutions are coming in here and there trying to make a, a, a quick buck a quick shilling on, on, on the upswings and upswings, basically doing trade swinging on, on most of the counters. But most, most individuals in the market either just keeping their money in the bank, guys are trying to look for the highest rate they can get on an NCD or on a fixed deposit. Mm -hmm. And we expect the trend to, to actually carry on for some time. Uh, but the NEC right now hasn't really come out of the woods for it to at start attracting investors again. Well, we've got the Kenjen bond coming online this morning. What are your expectations there in terms of subscription? We are looking at a 15 billion bond that's opening up here. There's actually quite a lot of money in the, in, in the money markets. I expect either to be actually fully subscribed or actually be oversubscribed. Uh, it would be strange if it is undersubscribed. Because most of the money has been moving to the money market. If you look at the oversubscription at the 182 day, at the 365 day T bill, uh, actually indicates that there's quite a lot of liquidity in that side of the market, contrary to what the, the central bank might think in the, in the country. But however, depending on how people look at the bond, was personally getting into a corporate bond where you can have a government bond that pays you similarly the same amount at a lesser risk. Most investors who rationally think would rather put their money in a government paper, which pays you the same interest rate at a lower risk than put it in Kenjan, but it will be fully subscribed. Well, let's compare then corporate bonds against each other here because this is at a time when we're looking at the Safaricom bond also coming on stream. So which of the two, if you're comparing a Kenjan and Safaricom, are, viewers, uh, are investors viewing as mo more lucrative right now? Kenjan has gone all out with the uh, public relations campaign and, and marketing or propaganda, if you'd like to call it. So to, to gauge sentiment to be a bit hard was they've been more in the market than the Safaricom one. Safaricom one has been a word that has been in the market with a few statements from the, from the company here and there. Uh, personally, my own view is that the Safaricom bond may be a bit more less riskier than the Kenjian bond, considering their market penetration rates are still low, they can still grow their revenues, their, 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 their bottom line is, is, is still okay, and for them it's a cheaper source of financing. For Kenjian, with the reduced revenues coming in because of this power rationing, drought, water, and the huge capital expenditure that they have to take, a bond will actually hit their bottom line further, further hitting mm -hmm. the performance of the company. So from an analyst's point of view, Safaricom. Okay, well, we've also seen improved forecasts as uh, far as growth prospects for the year are concerned being released last week. Analysts, however, say that second quarter uh, GDP numbers might fall below uh, the first quarter's 3.9% affecting sentiment. What have you priced in on that front? Uh, basically, that, that, that is... That tends to be a bit true. We expect second quarter actually not to, to reach the 3.9% the that was reached in, in, in the first quarter uh, due to one, a, a squeeze on lending by banks to, to the private sector, reducing local demand and consumption, high electricity cost and the drought, the food crisis, raising inflation. And also going forward into the second half of the year, we expect it to remain the same way because none of these factors actually look like they will be solved in the second half of the year. So the, the, the growth prospect of the economy in Kenya is not that um, bright. Well, at the same time, we've had the central bank governor over in Kenya saying that uh, the economy is likely to start improving in the next quarter after government spending for this fiscal year kicks in. What is the likely impact of that starting to filter through uh, going to have and how soon do you see uh, the effects of that actually being felt? 
carbon spending has not actually been that much. If you, if you compare uh, like, like, like periods last year and the year before, you find government spending right now is more concentrated on trying to avoid a crisis than actually move the country to development. So they are basically just trying to fill the gap that has been left by the crisis. So initially that will not have an impact so much on the GDP. The central bank governor, we really don't know where he get his statistics from or he, which script he reads from basically. Sometimes I think he just buries his head in the textbook and tries to churn out principles and equations to, to go along that way. So his statement, I don't think it will move the market that much. Well, we know that where they are looking at, uh, you know, directing some of the fiscal spend is towards infrastructure development specifically. So in that regard, should we start to see uh, some of the, you know, the cement players who are heavily involved in that space actually starting to tick up the likes of Bamburi, Ati River Mining and Portland Cement at least? True that, um, they have been actually doing some activity on the roads. Uh, that's the most, most major infrastructure development that the government has actually been focusing on and actually have committed and actually are committing and actually we can see progress on the ground. So in terms of cement production, you'll notice also over the past few quarters, past few years, the product consumption has been going up, production has also been going up, demand has also been rising. So for, for Bamburi, at the river mining, East Africa, Portland cement, the, the, their bottom lines might increase due to the increased demand from the government. But mainly Bamburi and at river mining, East Africa, Portland cement, Bogged down with a couple of problems, yeah. 